Riders, welcome to the biggest electric mountain bike motor test that's ever been conducted. Over the next six weeks at Sam's Bikes, we're putting all these seven e-bike motors to the ultimate test to find out which is crowned number one e-bike motor for 2024. And in today's test, it's all about the fastest e-bike motor. So we're gonna do a technical hill climb, and then we're also gonna turn the motors off and see how much drag each system has. And then next week, it's all about the sound. When you're climbing and when you're descending, which motors rattle, how much noise they make. So riders, make sure you subscribe, turn on those notifications, because you don't want to miss this series. Now let's introduce the motors and bikes on test. Number one, the Specialized Turbo. With the Bros Mag S motor, 90 new meters of torque on the Specialized Levo. Number two, the Bosch race motor with 85 Nm of torque on the Canyon Strive on. Number three, the SRAM powertrain system with the Bros Mag S with 90 Nm of torque on the Gas Gas ECC. Number four, the Rocky Mountain Dyname 4.0 with 108 Nm of torque on the Rocky Mountain Instinct. Number five, the Bafang M510 with 95 Nm of torque on the VMG Typhon. Number six, the Shimano EPA-01 with 85 new meters of torque on the Canyon Spectral On. And lucky last, number seven, the Giant Sync Drive Pro system with the Yamaha PWX3 motor with 85 new meters of torque on the Giant Rain E Plus Zero. Now, before we head out to the mountains, this test and Sam's Bikes is not possible without our amazing sponsors. First up, Schwabi, every bike here has tacky chance. We go on the ultra soft on the front and the soft on the back. So they're the control tires. Massive shout out to Schwabi, the long-term sponsor at Sands Bikes. And then Quadlock, I could not live without my Quadlock. I love it, I have it on all the bikes here. I use it as a teleprompter. Riders, if you haven't tried it, you should definitely check it out. And then Crank Brothers, every bike here has Crank Brother pedals. Riders love the setup. Been riding the Crank Brothers shoes and pedals for the last like four months, absolutely love it. And finally, Toe Peak have just come on as a sponsor like four months ago. That's really special to me because when I was like 18, I bought my first multi tool and now they're a sponsor. Absolutely love all their tools and a massive shout out to all our sponsors. Now, let's get out to the mountains. Okay, for the hill climb test, we're at my local trails. It's gonna be like a pretty standard hill climb test. We want it hard enough to put the motors to test, but not so hard I can't repeat it. And also all the bikes have been put in the highest assistant modes. So we're gonna get the full power from every bike and take it with a pinch of salt. There's a lot of variables going around here. You know, rider error, there is a few rock sections. So let's see how all the bikes go. And we're gonna start with a Specialized Levo Gen 3 with the Bros Mag S with 19 new meters of torque. And I've got Bayer on my quad lock, on my iPhone. And you're gonna call me in, aren't you my love? <laughs> Okay, ready, set, and go! And we're off and racing! There we go. It felt very fast and very smooth. And also, like when we did go over the rock section, it did bog down a little bit, but it was very controllable, not too much overrun. But really good in general. As I said, felt fast. And bear, what was the time? 36.46. 36.46, that's pretty good. Let's crack on. So now we're on the Canyon Strive on with the Bosch race motor. And bear, we are ready. Ready, set, and go. <sighs> Give me a second. All right, riders. That felt super fast off the line. Also really constant torque. Didn't bog down. Over the rocks, it did feel a little bit unpredictable. And I'm gonna say this is my second time on this one because I did lose it around one of the corners. The follow through or the overrun just was a little bit hard, but a very powerful motor. Bay, what's the time? 35.14. 35.14, that's a good time. Let's crack on. Now let's see what the gas gas can do with the brand new SRAM powertrain. All right, Bayer, let's go. Ready, set, 
and go! All right, so the brand new SRAM powertrain, surprise, surprise, feels a lot like the Specialized because I believe they have the same motor or very similar motor. And for me, they felt very similar. I did have some gear problems and over the sort of chatter, the bike did seem to bog down a little bit, but I think that was probably because I was in the wrong gear some of the time. Bale, what was the time? 36.6. 36.68. Okay, very good time as well. Let's crack on. Now for the most powerful, the Rocky Mountain Dynamo 4.0 with 108 newton meters of torque. Let's see, Bayer, let's go. Ready, set, and go. Uh. Okay, so the Rocky Mountain, Dyno 4.0 with 108 newton meters of torque. It went well, it felt fast, but if you did get those cadences lower than 60 RPM, it did bog down a little bit. But if you kept them high, around 80 to 90, this thing pulls like, I don't know, it pulls hard. It felt pretty fast. What was the time there? 34.16. Wow, 34.16. It didn't feel the fastest, but so far it is. Let's crack on. Now we're on the Aussie Design VMG with the Bafang M510 with 95 new meters torque. Bayer, let's crack it. Ready, set, and go. <laughs> All right, a lot of power. They like to be in high cadences, around 75 to 90, pulls really hard. I noticed when I got over the rock, like when I get into the technical section, did lose a little bit of traction because it has a lot of power. And also the overruns quite a lot. Coming to that last corner, the front wheel wanted to lift up, but it did feel fast. Bear, what's the time? 37.31. 37.31. That surprises me. Let's crack on. Now let's see what the Candor Spectral On can do with the Shimano EPA-01, 85 new meters of torque. Bayer, when you're ready. Ready, set, and go. So that was smooth, very predictable, but it didn't feel that fast. Felt a little bit slow on the other ones, but very predictable and very smooth and natural. Bear, what was the time? 41.19. 41.19. That is a lot slower than I did expect. But as I said, it felt quite smooth. Lucky last, the Giant Rain E Plus Zero with the Sync Drive Pro motor, which is based off the PWX3 with 85 new meters torque. And Bayer, let's kick it. Ready, set, and go. So that was the last one. I'm probably showing my fatigue and tiredness. So it could be affecting the time. The Giant, the Sync Drive Pro is amazing with that low end torque. It does bog down a little bit if you get the cadences wrong. I felt it bogged down a little bit, but it is very predictable and a very like easy bike to ride up the hill. How was the time there? 39.14. 39.14, respectable time. So riders, now we're gonna go and do a test. I can't wait to do it because I've got so much energy. We're gonna turn the motors off. We're gonna climb up a fire road and I'm gonna try and explain to you how much drag each motor has. Then we're back to the studio to analyze everything. So let's go. So I hope you enjoyed that ride as more than I did. It was bloody hard work, not gonna lie. But also it was really interesting, but there's more to it than what is the fastest bike. So now what we're gonna do is test what the bikes are like, what the motors are like, 
when the systems are off or above the limiter or you're out of battery. So we're gonna start off with the Shimano EPA-01 and I'm just gonna give you my feeling of why I ride up a fire road with the suspension locked out and just see how much drag or how much I can actually feel there's an e-bike motor there. Okay, we're off and racing. With the motor off, I'm gonna be honest riders, most e-bikes suck without a battery or above the limiter. But the EP801 is not bad. I'm gonna say you can't really feel the drag. Like there's a little bit of a drag, but it is pretty good. Let's check out the other ones. All right, now for the giant rain with the Sync Drive Pro motor. It's not bad either. It's definitely not bad. So yeah, that wasn't bad. Like I didn't feel a lot of drag, maybe a little bit more than the Shimano EP8, but this is not bad either. And now we're on the Rocky Mountain Dimane 4.0. You can definitely feel this one. It's got a high, like high pivot idler. You can hear it and you can feel it. It's not bad, but I'm definitely saying it's better with the power because this is a very powerful motor. And now for the Levo Gen 3 with the Bros Mag S. It was pretty good as well. It's definitely like picking out those fine wines. They're quite similar. I'm gonna say possibly there's a bit more drag than the Shimano EP8, but it's pretty good. And now for the SRAM powertrain. Yep, it was pretty good. There's not that much drag. Well, very similar to the Levo because I believe they are using the same motor. Okay, so now we're on the Bafang M510. And again, pretty smooth, not bad. Quite similar to all of them. Still, I think the Shimano's on top. All right, so lucky last Bosch race. You can definitely feel a bit more drag here, without a doubt. Yep, definitely over the other ones. Anyway, riders, that was a massive day. We're gonna head back to Sam's Bikes analyze all the data and give you my final thoughts. Wow, that was a crazy long day and it would not be possible without Bayer producing the whole thing, Alvaro the new cameraman doing a great job and Soto being the security guard out in the mountains keeping the seven e-bikes safe. Actually riders, what a logistical nightmare moving around all these bikes, but we did it because we love the raw data. And now onto the conclusion, and what a privileged position I'm in. Like a year and a half ago, this was unthinkable to have all these bikes for testing. And that is a thanks to you legend riders for supporting the channel. And riders being out there for the whole day testing all the different motors on the same trail, same time, same tires, same tire pressure, was so interesting. And you could really feel those subtle differences. And also riders, this was a full on hill climb test. I obviously rested in between testing, but towards the end of the test, I was getting a bit fatigued. So take this test with a pinch of salt. I also honestly think that all these e-bike motors are fantastic in their own way. And if you weren't racing them back to back, you'd be happy with any of them but we were racing them back to back, and these are the results. In seventh position, we have the Shimano EPA-01 with 41 seconds, 19. Now riders, if you follow the channel, you know I've been testing the Shimano EPA-01 for the last couple of months. I've been really happy with the motor, really happy with the natural feeling and the power, but when you put it back to back, it is quite obvious it is lacking power. And in sixth position, we've got the Giant Sync Drive Pro with 39 seconds, 14. And that didn't really surprise me, the motor is fantastic at low torque. You can muscle up everything, but when you get high cadences, it kind of fizzles out and it did feel a little bit slower. And in fifth position, we've got the Bafang M510 3731. And that did surprise me because the M510 is a really powerful motor. Sometimes a little bit uncontrollable, a bit like a wild horse. And maybe I lost a bit of traction over the rock section, but it does feel like a really fast motor. And in fourth position, we got the SRAM powertrain with 3668. And it felt predictable, powerful, silent. Um, one thing I did do is I changed the gears up when I was supposed to go down, and I might've got the gears a little bit wrong, and that could have affected the time, but a strong performer. And in third position, the Specialized Turbo coming in 3646. And this didn't surprise me, Specialized landing in the top three. Super powerful motor, predictable and silent. Just a good all-rounder. And runner-up is the Bosch race motor with 3514. 
And for me, I'm gonna say the Bosch race motor probably felt the fastest because you can like, it pulls at all different cadences. It just keeps on going. It's got a lot of power. I'm also gonna say it's quite unpredictable in the race mode. Uh, the overrun is pretty powerful and it caught me out. So I actually did two runs, but overall a very powerful system. And the winner is for the Sam's Bikes Hill Climb Test in 2024 is the Rocky Mountain Dyname 4.0 with an impressive 3416. The most powerful motor on paper and they backed it up on the trail. I'm gonna say it didn't feel like the fastest motor to me, but when you got in the power bands, like when you got those cadences right, this motor pulls like a freight train. It is really powerful and a lot of fun. So my take homes are, unless you're racing, you're gonna be happy with any of these seven motors. And that's why over the next six weeks, we're doing all the testing possible to pick the best system in general. I don't think the most powerful motor makes it the best motor, but if you are gonna be racing and you are looking for the most powerful system, well, you got the stats right here. And now for the drag test with the motor off, and loads of riders ask me this question. Look, if I'm honest, e-bikes work a lot better when they're on with batteries, but here you go. I'm gonna say, and this was a hard test because this was all on feeling, and I'm gonna say the Shimano EP801 probably has the least amount of drag and you can't feel it, but it's very closely followed by the Specialized, SRAM, Giant, and Bafang. And funny enough, the most powerful and the fastest motors, the Rocky Mountain and the Bosch, seem to have the most drag for me. But again, riders, this is my opinion. What do you think of the motors? How much drag do they have? Put it in the comments. And riders, make sure you subscribe to Sand Spikes because next week we are doing the sound test when you're climbing and when you're going downhill to find out which is the most silent motor for you legend riders. And you know it, stay safe out there and we are gonna see you next week.